Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S, that is, at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four. Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Radamic Berto Willis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. Let me tell you something, guys, first of all, about our fun drive at KPFT. Yesterday, I want to thank all of you guys for a very, very solid on the part of our show uh, showing yesterday. Uh, you did a great job at KPFT 90.1 FM. KPFT 90.1 FM still needs your support because we are in in dire straits but i want to tell you something the great thing that i saw yesterday was the great crossover meaning folks that watch politics done right online uh politics done right live on facebook live youtube live periscope and all these other places i saw some of you in the list yesterday at kpft 90.1 fm houston and i want to thank you from the depths of my heart because you know what folks could not have done it or we can't do it without you you guys are hell of a folks you guys are hell of a people you guys know that progressivism progressiveness progressivicity i like all those words i think i invented two of them will not happen without you so you are the ones who have to get it done and you will get it done not only by supporting candidates but supporting all of those that are doing so all of us that are hitting the movement very hard. We are going to have a great show for you today, and I want you to stick with me the entire show for those of you who can. And I would like some of you to call in if you have something to say, because it is imperative. It is imperative that we get serious about what we're doing. The time is coming up, and you know what? Democrats, progressives are going to win big, huge in 2020, but there's a hell of a lot of stuff you got to do to make that, to realize that reality. And you know what? You can. And we're going to be talking that over the next few months. Title of the show today, Jeff Bezos, latest actions should be the nail in the coffin for employer health insurance. Subtitle, Jeff Bezos, latest move shows exactly why Americans must never, ever, ever trust private or employer health insurance. It is no more than another profit center. Listen. Jeff Bezos continues the path of health insurance betrayal by the corporatocracy. American health insurance continues to be in shambles, unfortunately, until Americans elect a progressive president and progressive Congress, it will remain a major wealth transfer mechanism for the few. In other words, your money, everything you earn, whatever increases you get, goes right into Bezos' pockets and the pockets of all those other millionaires. And that isn't rich envy. That isn't wealth envy. Because you know what? Any person on this planet that has a high school education can be wealthy. Donald Trump is an example. It doesn't take much upstairs to be wealthy. It just takes a particular pathology. It only takes a particular pathology. Remember that. To be super wealthy, you have to you have to want to grab on hoard capital some of us just want to live some of us have given up that hoarding of capital to do real things so don't you ever forget that it is essential it is essential rather it is essential that we fight it is essential that we not allow the plutocracy to run who we are to change who we are remember that but guess what's today buddies Ladies and gentlemen, today is Tamara's Wednesday. As usual, she visits us every other week with a topic of her choice. And notice I said a topic of her choice. It's her space. We like to change things up. Don't forget to visit her at Tamara for Georgia, tamaraforgeorgia.com. We want to elevate 
everybody that's in this movement moving us forward. Let's remember that. Everybody. We are all one team. So, folks, without further ado, I bring you, and I need to, uh, uh, you know, I, I said I, I got to bring her in, but guess what's happening right now? I am completely off screen, and I just fixed that, and without further ado, should I bring her in? Come out off for Georgia. How are you? <laughs> it's okay, Egberto. Yeah. <laughs> Technology. Technology every now and then gets you. Anyhow, Tamara, let's go yes, ahead sir. and talk about that the Democratic dinner that you missed and why again you missed it. Yeah, so last night uh, the Democratic Party here in Georgia had their annual Democratic dinner and there were activists outside of the, you know, outside of the event protesting. They were they are Democrats, they weren't Republicans or anything, but they were protesting the silence of our Democratic Party around police brutality. And it's just a shame. It's just a shame. We had an incident. We've had many incidents, but one in particular where a naked man who was mentally ill was killed at the hands of the police. I mean, this man obviously could, you know, was a threat, but did he have to die? He right. did not. I do when not you said he was a threat, what do you mean, Tamata? Did I, he have a gun or anything? No, he did not have a gun, but he was not well. And I believe there was, you know, the just running around, probably scared the officers and they felt endangered. I'm not trying to litigate this case, but I'm just saying that there could have been some sort, some sense of fear from the officers, but I don't believe that our officers should sh always shoot to kill. Uh, I think that we need to have another way to de-escalate si situations, but officers shouldn't always, the first thing- Is there, was there a video cam? Uh, I don't know the, if there was a video cam um, with this or not, but that, but Anthony Hill is dead. But my, again, uh, Tamara, the, the reason I'm asking you this is a naked man with no weapon and Just that shot. alone was enough. And he's dead. Just that alone. But he was naked. Um, we just need to have a better way in this country, across this country, where we address, uh, we have to address police brutality, the murders of, of, of people of color at the hands of the police. It has to be a, a, an issue that we take very seriously and have some policy initiatives. Tamara, now that you mentioned that, given that you brought that up, right? Um, mm -hmm. I think this is an opportune time for me to uh, play this thing because this woman is <laughs> saying the exact opposite. I don't think you're going to be able to hear it right away. So you may want to actually go to the live broadcast to listen to it. And here it goes. And folks, I want you to hear this because what Tamara just brought was a naked black man that was uh, shot dead. Yes, he wasn't well. But why shot dead? And listen to this woman. My patio, I had to yell out, who's back there? And the answer that I got is, it's the police. I'm a white woman in a middle class neighborhood. And the circumstances of my call, the police were called out to a barking dog. Not a welfare call, a barking dog. But the police came onto my property. They started flitting around and creeping around stealthily. They did not come to my front door and announce themselves when anybody could have seen that someone was home. Instead, they flitted around and they were stealthy. And it wasn't until I cried out that they announced themselves as the police. I am alive and Tay is not. And that's why... That's white privilege right there. Because my, my biggest fear that night was what if the police shot my dog? And I'm mortified to say that. But after that night, that was my feelings. What if they shot my dog? If I were a black woman in this city, my fear would be what if they shot me? I stand with you and I commend you for wanting to have a police oversight committee. What I ask of you is that you have a criminal defense attorney present on that committee. We watch body cams all day. We can tell you what's going on and we can name names. Were you able to hear that? Mm -hmm. I could hear some of it. And I and actually had already seen the video. Her, you know, she was afraid for her dog. We are afraid for our lives. And you know, you know, it, it's funny because the, pr the past president of Coffee Party put that in mind. Uh, this is this a 50, probably a 60-year-old 
a white woman, a damn good friend of mine. Uh, you know, we met at the, at the DNC in, in Dallas and we've been friends ever since and she became the president of Coffee Party. And, you know, she sends me things like this every so often. But when she sent me this thing, for me, it was like, wow. The important thing here was, in my opinion, uh, because I think you have to be able to acknowledge reality. This white woman goes ahead and says, my only concern when I saw those cops, I didn't see those cops as potentially life-threatening. Mm -hmm. I saw those cops life-threatening, not for me, but for my dog. Any black person, whether you call the cops or you see a cop close to your home, one of the factors in your head is, am I going to get shot because this cop has an insane fear of... There are two reasons they shoot you, right? One is they have an insane fear of black people, but the second one is that they're just simply racist and you're just a notch on your gun. And I try to explain that to people. I try to explain that cops kill for two reasons. One is they're scared of people with any kind of different hue, or one is that they're racist, one or the other? Or both. Or both. Well, I don't know. Both. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think racists are scared of black people. I don't think so. I, I think racists just want to kill them. Racists are scared of black people. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, it, it is, you know, it's a, it's, it, that is where we are in this country. And, it, you know, my son and one of his little friends got into a little small fender bender. Mm -hmm. And these are teenage boys, black boys. and my son, I've had so many, he's 17, I've had so many conversations with him about how to engage when you encounter the police. But the other little boy, I don't think he had had the conversation. So my son was telling me, he thanked me afterwards because immediately, you know, I got up there to where they were. But he thanked me. He said, Mom, I just want to thank you for, you know, telling me what to do in this kind of situation because he was like, I had to talk my friend through it because, you know, he really didn't know, you know, stay calm, give him your license. You know, is certain the mannerisms, mm -hmm. you know, speak, you know, correctly, you know, just all the things that, you know, nobody else I have to worry to about my son in order to stay alive when he right. encountered the police, both my sons. Let me give you a, a story because this one is going to fascinate you. My mm -hmm. daughter went out on a date. OK, mm -hmm. uh, she went out on a date with a black young man who uh, his parents are white. Both parents are white. They're coming to her apartment, and this other black kid did something. Uh, uh, some, I don't remember exactly what, what he did. And this kid came out, and he said, oh, I am calling. You know, he takes out his cell phone, and he says, I am calling the police, and ta da ta 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 on, on, the, on the phone. And then, I, I'm sorry, the person who was giving them a hard time was a white kid giving the two of them a hard time, right? So he's taking out his cell phone to call the police. <laughs> My daughter... Uh, pulls him aside and my daughter she got upset when she called me she was so upset she said dad uh i grew up in a white community i understand all the stuff that you taught me about how you need to act or whatever i am so happy you taught me that when i when her friend first i think it was second or third date they went out and she saw that she panicked because the last thing she wanted her she wasn't so much, she wasn't too, too concerned about herself because black women get a better break except for this poor woman in Fort Worth, okay? I think what happened is he just saw Hugh, he didn't see, he didn't see gender. But, um, but when it came to my daughter, the guy that she was going out with was a black guy. The guy that was harassing them was a white guy, okay? And she said, she looked at me and said, Dad, this fool just don't get it. That the cops come there, the first thing the cops are going to assume Mm -hmm. is the guy that she's with was the problematic one and not the other way around. And before they have a chance to explain the situation, it could have been over. And when she told me that, the first thing I said was, thank God I taught this. Because again, we live in a, uh, just like you, we live in a white community, you know? And all their mm -hmm. friends or a large, part, part, a large portion of their friends are white. And mm -hmm. I always told her when she was growing up, when they're in cars together or whatever, do remember that you'll be selected out. And quite a few friends have realized that right here in Kingwood, that they're in a car and they're the ones who were selected for X, Y, and Z. And it was mm -hmm. explained to her. And, you know, she got, the good thing about it, she got it. Mm -hmm. She got it. 
Mm-hmm. And it's a sad thing that we have to teach our children how to survive a police encounter. How to survive a police encounter. The police should protect and serve, but I have to teach, we have to teach our children how to survive them. It, yeah, it, uh, <laughs> look. This is uh, America. And the thing about it is, the, what I was happy about the video that we just showed there is mm-hmm. when you say it, when I, love I say my it, white allies. I love, I love my I white love allies, allies. Of course. I love them. <laughs> yes, but, but here's, here's, and this is what I tell them all of the times. Mm-hmm. We need them to mm-hmm. do a lot of speaking because, Tamara, you could be the most eloquent person as long as they don't see who you are. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. If you listen to my daughter speak, okay? You ain't got a clue what she looks like. But once you see her, you know who she is, what she's. My point here is this, because it's so important. We have to have people that don't look like us, the majority of population out there, be real allies. Because a lot of the others think when we say things, oh, you're just playing a race card. Oh, you're just doing this. Oh, we have a, a very popular person on my a conservative, very nice guy. Daniel Ledeau, anytime we talk about these issues, oh, you're the ones who are always bringing up race. Well, yeah, because we live it. And that's why, it's our, you, like you just said, our white allies are so important. They have to say the things that we've been saying, but it, it, it comes across very differently. And I just, you know. But you know what else? T- Tamara, I want to interrupt you for one second. It's mm-hmm. when they live it also. Because when you say it, it doesn't mean much. I was on a bike ride. I, I, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be done real soon. I cycle. I cycling with my buddy. Okay, another white guy. Two of us cycling, and we go into. Uh, I went into the, the stop and go first, and then he followed, and I'm about to order, and the person takes care of him first. Okay, and you know, I let it slide and go out there and whatever. I don't. I don't say anything. I just wanted to see what his response was like. So he saw it happen once. You can't mm-hmm. take that as a pattern. You know, we do 60 miles. It's a 60 miles ride. And he saw, he saw it on the other side, right? Mm-hmm. He, he then go ahead uh, and saw it on the other side. We go to uh, the 30 mile mark. Same thing happens again. I let it slide because again, I'm not, you know, I'm, look, we're used to it. We go outside and uh, He's red faced now. I mean, red like a cherry. He's embarrassed. And he looked at me and he said, I am so sorry. I get it now. I told him, if, it, if, if I weren't with you, I would have had a different reaction. Okay. But I, we were having a pleasant ride and I didn't want to make you uncomfortable. And that's, it's somehow we are always in that mode. Try that. We don't want to make things, folks, too uncomfortable. So we take a lot of the discomfort. That's not always a good thing, Egberto. It's they a terrible need, thing. They, they have to experience it so they can know how to be better allies. If they don't know what we're going through and if we are like comforting them in this process, they can't be there. They can't help us to the extent that they need to. So, no, we cannot do that. No, I, I, I am with you. I am 100 percent with you. You are 100 percent right. You're 100 percent right. There, there are a lot of times that I, you know, I just for the sake. Why are you smiling? I'm just listening. I like when I'm right, Egberto. <laughs> you don't let me. You, know, you don't let me be right very often. <laughs> I don't. I don't like the sound of that. Come on. Now. <laughs> Anyhow, so what else is up, my dear Tamara? What else? What else do we have? I mean, we got. You know, all our listeners can. Uh, I heard those stories, and I, I. I hope they don't only hear the stories, but I hope that they. They. They absorb it and start to do something. Um, about it. In other words, be an active ally as you, as you speak about all of the time. Be an active ally because that is what's going to take. Anyway, what mm-hmm. else the matter? Well, I am, have put my, uh, some feelers out, Egberto. I wasn't sure if you would allow me, give me the opportunity because I told you whatever I decided to do politically that I would definitely bring it to the broadcast. So I have put some feelers out, Egberto. I am testing the waters. The FEC calls this a testing the waters initiative Uh but georgia is making history with having two u.s senate races on the ballot at the same time um so i am testing the waters to the u.s senate and i am going to see where this goes i'm excited to i will announce my candidacy once i get past this phase of it doing a lot of of 
having a lot of conversations, making some different connections and some additional connections um, for my state level race that I've run before. But I am testing the waters to the U.S. Senate and I am looking to be on the ballot next year. Oh, so you are announcing the possibility of running for the U.S. Senate of Georgia. I love that mm -hmm. on Politics Done Right. Folks, right, right. when you see Senator Tamara Sheely in, in, uh, in the Senate in 2020, remember she announced it on Politics Done Right. Thank you, Egberto. <laughs> you, know, you better go out there and win that thing, young lady. But you know what? It's going to be a fight. The, 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 your first fight is going to be the Democratic Party, but that's okay. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. And, and it's, it's a sad thing that I have to fight my own. I think we're, you know, like I said, we're all on the same team. I don't, it's just, I think we have an issue with how we get there. It's not that mm -hmm. we don't all want the same thing. It's just how we actually get what we need. And it's all about the people. It's all about those that are um, our constituents right here in Georgia. And it's, it's, and it's about this country and doing the right thing for all people, not just some people, but all people. Well, I mean, given the amount of work that you've done with some of the organizations that you've worked with, with the organization that you run for, the, for your industry and everything else, um, I have no doubt that whichever other Democrat throw themselves into the ring, they have a fight coming up. Uh, I know for probably FEC reasons, you can't quite say that you're officially running, but I can read that face. You're running. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I will make an official announcement really here soon, so just stay tuned. Um, you can find us every Friday right here on Facebook and on YouTube at Tamara for Georgia with my, my trusty co-host, Mr. David Slavin. Fridays at 11 a.m. and always Mr. Egberto giving us a national political update. She only gives me two minutes. I give you ten. You just don't ever use them. <laughs> See? Dear. All right. Whatever. <laughs> No, we don't need 10 to go ahead. Not, actually, the reason I don't use 10 minutes is the discussion on your show is so, you know, I, I find it so interesting and fruitful or whatever. I think just kind, sometimes kind of break in for that in that national viewpoint, kind of mess with your flow. So, I mean, for me, it's like, okay, I'll come in and just say what I, please continue what, because I want to get out of there and continue listening to you guys. Because you well, guys this, have, Friday, this Friday, I want you to talk about Trump and this lynching comment. Oh, I thought you're going to put, put me there, aren't you? Ever, ever. Yeah, well, okay, I'll, I'll do that. But um, <laughs> Tamara Shile, give me a closer. You can find us uh, right here on social media, Facebook and YouTube. Check out my Testing the Waters campaign. It is at TamaraForGeorgia.com. Again, I am Tamara Johnson Shealy, and I want to thank you, Politics Done Right family, for always giving me the opportunity right here on this broadcast. Tamara, muchas gracias por estar aquí. Thank you so kindly for having been here. And Thank I'll you. see you in two, well, I'll see you on Friday. Take care. Bye-bye. Now, folks, that was Tamara uh, Chile. And it looks like we got an announcement that she's going to be running for the Georgia Senate. Well, officially for FEC reasons, I think she can't quite say that she is running for the Senate. But you know what? I have a feeling she's going to run for real, and I think that's a good thing. This woman has worked a whole lot in politics and also helping people all around. So, folks, I mean, uh, what can I say? What can I say? But, folks, uh, here is the deal. Here is the deal. Today I want to talk about, I, I, I spoke to you earlier, what the show is going to be about. I want, you know... At Daily Coast, I write a lot. Every time I write my front page uh, article, so many times it has to do with Medicare for All. And there are people who tell me when I'm doing the writing, you know, I am tired, Egberto, of hearing about Medicare for All. They write me. Or Medicare for All again? And, you know, I get this kind of a message in all of the times. And... At first, I'm like, well, maybe next time I should write about something else that doesn't necessarily touch on Medicare for All. And then I turn on the TV or I get, look into my news feed and realize that Americans are bombarded by the Partnership for, a healthcare, the partnership for, healthcare Amer for an America's Healthcare. There's this group that's funded by the insurance industries, the hospitals, etc., that are trying to kill Medicare for all. They're trying to kill even the public option. And then I, to I asked myself, would I be responsible listening to two or three or four or five people 
who are tired of reading that I write a lot about Medicare for All, to which I said, my five brothers and sisters who are tired of hearing Medicare for All, I ask you to kindly put up with me. Put up with us. And the reason why is that those fighting against Medicare for All don't see you for one hour a day on a newscast. They don't see you for one article a week on the front page on the Daily Coast. They don't see you for a few articles a day in Facebook or a few videos a week on, on, on YouTube Live coming from yours truly. So I ask you, give us the latitude to have to continue to talk about Medicare for All and to continue to, to ask people to see it as it should be seen and not through the lies that you get from the other side. I ask you so kindly for that. So today's, uh, today we're going to talk about Medicare for All in a different light. This is completely in a different light. So do you know what time it is. It's time for the weekly blog post. Okay, so here we go. The title of the article, the title of the article that I, the blog post that I'm talking about is called Good Employer Health Insurance Never Guaranteed. Are you willing to chance it? Remember that a lot of people, a lot of people in, in the unions, I don't want to lose that health care that I really negotiated for, and that's the reason why we didn't take that salary increase or whatever. Stop negotiating on health care. It's a racket. It's a racket. They may tell you they give you a few more services, and they may tell you they give you a membership that you would have done better paying for it yourself than getting it through some deal to reduce your salary. One of the reasons our pay has been stagnating for so long is not only because the corporatocracy is a greedy, self-eating piece of you-know-what. It's not just that. There are a few good corporations out there. The reason, though, that your wages have been stagnating is that your wages have been given to somebody else. The wage increase that you would have normally have is now going to whom? To the insurance companies, the ones who insure you for your health care and many other things. Those are the people receiving your health care today. I mean, your wage increase today. Because as you get a wage increase, guess what happens? They increase their premiums. The hospital charges more. And that is what we're looking at. So it is imperative. It is imperative that you that you see what's really going on going on here. So again, your loss in wages can be directly attributed, and I mean this, directly attributed to the increase in wages, or rather the increase in healthcare costs. So here is the article that I wrote for today. Good employer health insurance never guaranteed. Are you willing to risk it? Are you willing to chance it? Democratic primary candidate Pete Buttigieg and Joe Biden and others believe Americans love their employer health insurance. Oh, I love my uh, employer health insurance. What can that insurance do for you? What they fail to understand is that what Americans like is the health care services they are afforded by good insurance. And notice I didn't say by by employer insurance or whatever, they love the services they are afforded by good insurance. The reality is that leaving a major portion of one's health and economic success in the hands of any employer is a fool's errand. I digress. Today, they fire you. You had great insurance at that company. No job is guaranteed. You're fired tomorrow. You've just lost that great insurance that your job purportedly has 
for you, the thing that you love so much, it's not in your control. You can lose your job tomorrow. You can get sick and not be able to hold your job tomorrow. There are many things that are not guaranteed. Shouldn't health care be guaranteed, especially in a rich country that can afford to do so? Anyhow, the employer's fiduciary responsibility is to the shareholders of the company, the owners of the company. In other words, if they must cut your health insurance benefits, salaries, or any other benefits, they will do it continuously maximize the, to maximize the profit and wealth growth of the owners and executives. And you know what? When I say that, we don't have to ask. It's what's happening to everybody. Everybody that I speak to every year, their insurance rate goes up higher than inflation. And if they get a 1%, 2 or 3% tax raise, or rather an uh, uh, income increase, it generally goes to pay for the increase in their health care, and generally not enough to cover the increases of ev anything else. It's a sham. The reality is that leaving a major portion of one's health and economic success in the hands of any employer is a fool's errand. The employer's fiduciary responsibility is to the shareholders of the company, the owners of the company. In other words, if they must cut your health insurance benefits, salaries, or any other benefits, they will do it continuously, maximize the profit and wealth growth of owners and executives. The above is not conjecture, but fact. It is the reason every year you are in fear to see what changes your employer health insurance will look like. How much more will it cost you? How much more services will you have to pay for now? What doctors are no longer in the plan? What drugs and surgical procedures are no longer covered? But wait a minute, that's not Medicare for all. That is employer-based insurance. That is private insurance. I thought that the people that controlled all your medical life decisions in Medicare for All is a government, while with private health care, you can do as you please. You can choose. You have choice. Bull. That's the lie. And that's the lie we have to get across to people. When you have private health care, whichever one you choose, they tell you they are your master. You are the slave. They tell you, you can see X, Y, or Z doctor, and if you choose your own, you pay more, or maybe you don't get paid at all. They choose what hospitals you can go to. They choose what drugs you can take. They choose what particular surgery or surgical procedure you can have. And if you don't want them to choose, you can buy a an insurance type policy that is all oh, so much bigger, so much better. But, but, you pay for it and isn't, aren't you worried about Medicare for all because supposedly it's going to cost you more? It's the biggest lie. It's the biggest lie. Every study that came out proves the opposite. But it's not only that. It just defies math. They are asking you as intelligent people, because you are a capitalist, because you ain't no socialist. They are asking you, because of terminologies, to vote against your own interests and to not like something that would be much better for you. Before I go into what Jeff Bezos did, let me remind you. Medicare for All says you can see the doctor that you want to see. HMOs, PPOs, and otherwise tell you what doctor you can see. Medicare for All says if a doctor assigns that this drug is better for you, then that's a drug you have. Unlike a PPO, HMO, or general, insur general private insurance, it tells you, no, you cannot have that drug. If you want that drug, you will pay more for it. Medicare for All says if you have to have a particular surgical procedure, that you will have it. Private insurance says, let's go figure it out and see if there is a better option that you should use. Private insurance versus Medicare for All. Private insurance doesn't give you eye care generally unless you pay an arm and a leg more for it. It doesn't give you dental unless you pay an eye and a leg for it. Do you know that many people with heart troubles, that an infection started in their gums and that infection migrated through their bloodstream to infect the valves in their hearts? Did you know that? So when people say, oh, well, dental, you don't need... 
No, all those people with horrendous smelling mouths with bad teeth or whatever, a lot of times they also have heart problems created by not having the cure for dentistry that they should have. So, we finally said, Medicare for all, something that we can afford, something that will cost the middle class less, a hell of a lot less for most. Remember, my deductible before my wife went and worked where she has a better insurance was $10,000. So think about that, how much it costs. Let me tell you. Americans are being lied to, and it is your responsibility, those of you who are hearing my voice, those of you who understand math, those of you who are smart and not gullible, to go out there, and when you hear somebody make the silly comments about government takeover of my health care, remember that right now you have corporate take care of, takeover of your health care, and the corporations just want to maximize profits for their people. They just want to take your money, give it to their people, and whatever left over, then we'll give you some health care. Remember that. It's funny because a friend of mine uh, was talking about how the capitalistic system works, right? She uh, uh, worked at some radio stations, and, and one thing that she said that was amusing, she said, when you listen to a radio show, you think you're listening to a program that, that commercials subsidize. In other words, you listen to the, a program that is of interest to people, and uh, to pay for that program that's of interest to people, you have corporations who advertise on that program a few spots. There's a CEO who went to, uh, to one of these radio stations and said, remember, we are a delivery system for commercials. In other words, as far as they're concerned, the content is their commercial and the commercial is their delivery system. Or rather, the content is their delivery system for commercial. So they don't care what the content is. They just want a little piece of content, and it is the delivery method for your commercial. So when you see a politics done right giving you content, giving you information, you know we are coming from a point of view that we, want, we are activists. We want to change the world. We want to change the world and make it better for people. That's what we want to do. But a lot of radio stations and TV stations, they call... The content, what I'm doing, they call that the delivery system for commercials. You can't really have that and believe you're going to help people. You can't do that and think you're helping people. It's impossible. So anyhow, let me read what Jeff Bezos has started to do. Continuing with the blog of the week. Now, Billionaire Jeff Bezos showed recently that the rich have a pathological disease. They never have enough. As good as it has been for them, they still want more. Common Dreams reported the following, and this is what they say, quote, The Washington Post, owned by world's richest man Jeff Bezos, is reportedly moving most of its staff onto the one post journalist described as high deductible health insurance plans that shift significant costs and risks onto employees. A decision Medicare for All proponents highlighted as a prime example of the instability and injustice of the employer-sponsored healthcare system that is frequently praised by centrist Democratic presidential candidates. The Washington Post Guild, the union that represents Post employees, sent an email Tuesday informing members that the company announced changes to our healthcare plans for next year. The news is that the health plan that two-thirds of Post employees have now the Aetna Health Fund is going away, and you reserve health fund monies will not roll over. The guild said opponents of Medicare for All, such as former Vice President Joe Biden and South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg, often argue that a single payer system would deprive people of the choice to keep their private insurance if they are satisfied with their coverage. As Pete, as Matt. Brunig of the People's Policy Project has pointed out, this argument ignores the fact that under the current employer system, insurance system, people don't have the choice to keep their plan if their boss decides to change it. The only way to stop that from happening to people is to create a seamless system where people do not constantly chum or churn on and off insurance. Remember that. Our current system offers the exact opposite. If you like losing your insurance all the time, then our current healthcare system is the right one for you. Americans must not buy, and that's end quote. 
Now, m back to my words. Americans must not buy into the disinformation coming from the likes of Pete Buttigieg, Joe Biden, Amy Klobuchar, and all the rest, corporate Democrats. The Republicans, the party, and the plutocracy, they're all lying to you. Who, they all have vested interests in maintaining a system that sucks the middle class dry with private employer health insurance. They are directly responsible for the masses' inability to accumulate wealth. And they fool most into believing they are working in their best interest. Do not buy into it, folks. I don't want you to buy into it. Let's go ahead and use our minds. Let's go ahead and use our minds. It is that much more important. Do not buy it. Medicare for all is the only guarantee that one does not have to worry about year after year after year after year. And that eliminates the possibility of bankruptcy or lack of health care. The only answer, Medicare for all. Don't let anybody try to tell you otherwise. Don't let them try to put your mind up. Math prevails. Math prevails. Math prevails. Something cannot be cheaper if you have a whole lot of other expenses. What are these other expenses? Numero uno, the rich executives that get millions. Numero dos, the rich uh, owners of the stock of these companies. And you know, you know owners, the, the owners of businesses are great, right? Think about this. You go ahead and let me, let me tell you how backwards or how lousy our system is they want to pay less taxes so our kids have to pay a lot more money to go to college so now they owe the banker a lot of interest over the years more than double what they they actually paid for the loan in the first place then given that the the corporations get all that education for free they get an education populace for free Almost for free. So the educated populace that, that paid for their own education come to work. Those same employers, you know they're invested in the banking system. You know they're invested in the insurance system. They now charge high rates for insurance. And guess who make the profit? The shareholders of these insurance companies. And who are the shareholders? The same corporations. What we find is a circular growth of wealth. That's why they're only small percentage of America that owns everything because the insurance agents try to maximize their money by ripping you off and guess what your employer likely owns a hell of a lot of stocks in those insurance companies that are ripping you off the bankers rip you off with the student loans and guess what those same companies probably own stocks in the bankers that are profiting from ripping you off so not only are they paying you money they're 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 reaping the benefits of investments in all these other companies that are ripping you off so where does the money stay centralized into all these the small amount of capitalists brothers and sisters it's hard to understand rather it's easy to understand but it's hard to accept many times it's hard to accept that we have been hoodwinked by a system that keeps the veil over our eyes to see what is really happening and when we realize what is really happening, if we continue to do or tolerate it, then we deserve the government that we have, that paid for government. Come 2020, we have that choice. Come 2020, we can say, you know what? We are going to take the veil off. We are going to support that progressive candidate that best represents what we want. We are going to support that progressive candidate that really means what they're saying. We are going to support... Not only the presidential candidate, but we are going to support Congress people, senators running for the, for the Congress from the state house, from the uh, municipal economies, right up the chain. It is, it take, it's going to take a transformational change, a thought process that doesn't be believe that the owners of capital are the only ones that matter and that you are nothing but a peon. You are nothing but a a cog. You are nothing but some means of folks acquiring wealth, which is what most people are right now. Most people don't have it within themselves to believe they're worthy of what they are worthy of, which are the ones who create and keep this economy going. Folks, it is important that we see the light. I'm out of time, and I have a very important interview with an environmental activist and a native activist in about half an hour. So I've got to shut this baby down right now. So I want to thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. 
please, please remember, we need your support. Please go to politicsdoneright.com. Please go to politicsdoneright.com and show your support. Go to politicsdoneright.com and give a contribution or better, become a subscriber. Our subscription rates are cheap and we just don't sit in front of a camera. In fact, next week I'm heading off to, uh, on Monday I'll be in D.C. I'll bring you guys a few stuff from D.C. Um, we are going to a Bridge Alliance conference. Uh, this Bridge Alliance conference unites people from all different factions together. We bring them all into one room and we talk how can we do things to make things better for everybody else. So that's what I'll be doing in D.C. this, uh, this week. I'll be getting a whole lot of videos from out there. I'm doing... Uh, I'm working with the leader of uh, the Bridge Alliance. Uh, she is a wonderful person who uh, really has been doing this work for a very long time. And even though it's a slow, tedious work, getting people together, thinking, thinking together and, and giving people a purpose, telling people that they matter, that is what it is all about. That's what we do. Please consider becoming a subscriber. Please go to politicsdoneright.com and either become one of our patrons or provide a, uh, a good, solid donation or however you can afford or go ahead and become a P PayPal subscriber. That is how we keep these things going. My name is Egberto Willies. This is Politics Done Right. And you know how I end this baby. I am what? Out! Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Willies. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S, that is, at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four. Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Willie. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S, that is, at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four.